So when I uh, went up to play at the Mercury Music Prize, uh, it was at the Grosvenor Hotel, London, lots of flashes of cameras, standing there, looking out amongst all these people, rabbit in headlights, I really was, I felt very out of place. Hello, welcome to the very glamorous Grosvenor House Hotel in Park Lane in London. We're here for the Mercury Music Prize 2005. And uh, let me say that the literally the floor, the pavement here in Park Lane is quaking in anticipation. I mean, I've, I've done a few things within Warner Brothers and Equation because we were signed for a bit. So there was a, you know, a bit of a role with that and real world records and stuff, but nothing like this. And I didn't expect it. And I was thrust right there into the limelight. Seth Lakeman has forged a formidable reputation in the UK folk scene. His second solo album, Kitty J, is thrilling and haunting and draws upon the myths and legends of his native Dartmoor. I was up there on my own. So I went there on my own and then I went to play. I had the foot stomper, I remember, and Jules Holland was looking at me going, what, is, what are you doing? Yeah, Seth, what are you doing? The first time I've met him. Our next artist is Seth Lakeman, a man who is fast becoming a brilliant ambassador for our flourishing folk scene. He's forged a formidable reputation performing with his family in the Lakeman Brothers and with artists such as Kate Rusby and Cara Dillon. And then he heard the sound check I did, and he was, he's the one who kind of gave me the confidence. Thank you to Jules for that, really, because I was pretty nervous. So I was there on my own in a hotel room. Um, and yeah, I remember after playing, I remember it was a kind of silence, a weird silence. I wasn't sure if something had gone wrong. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, it seemed to have, you know, a really big impact on the room. And I guess it's not, you know, it's quite a unique thing, what you're doing, singing playing that song, and I think the film that led up to it as well, the way it's done, more themed, it was all very special. It's a really, really magical, I think, tied together of, of those elements, you know? The, the, the violin, the singing, and the, the, the story of Kitty. Um, so, played the song, the silence, then I guess the aftermath, which, you know, the, the album sold incredibly well. It, it was, we couldn't keep up with the, the demand. And then I was, um, yeah, lots of record companies knocking on my door, basically. It was like a, a dream come true as a, an artist. So they were coming, buy me dinner, at the Rock Inn in Yelton, and trying to sign me up. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and I had to sign to someone in the end with Freedom Fields. That's, that's the way it, it just became too big, really, for, for us to to handle. So, um, really exciting time. This is Farewell My Love. Farewell, my love, for all we've done 
I the setting of the sun. So Dartmoor is such a special place for me. Still live on the edge of Dartmoor there, in the Elverton, and I think it's hard to pick out three favorite places, but I would say Peak Hill is one of them, one of the best spots right up there. Um, you look out over Burrital Reservoir and all the way across to uh, Plymouth Sound. I took the kids up there just the other day to watch the, uh, the fireworks and it's amazing. It's, it's 12 miles away to Plymouth, but you can see these amazing flowers popping up all over the place. It's a beautiful spot. Um, and then Burrator Reservoir itself. Stunning, absolutely beautiful down there. That's where, if you ever want to see that area, you watch the start of War Horse. So Steven Spielberg came and stayed around there and they did all these wonderful helicopter shots um, of that whole reservoir and that whole area and Sheep's Tour itself as well, which you overlook um, from Peak Hill. A lot of people pick out Brentor, which is the church, St. Michael's Church on the ley lines there. It's a very, very special church. Very small, but it's a lovely spot. I think Dartmoor, you know, is always a discovery for me. It's such a beautiful place uh, and it's forever an inspiration. Yeah. 
biggest parts for me being an artist are, as we spoke about, the landscape you come from. That foundation is from being, I never write anything when I'm away on tour and I've, I've never been able to do that, I've tried. So I think there's a special magic to that place of Dartmoor. Family's a huge thing for me and certainly recent albums I've been writing a lot more about it. So I would say it's landscape and family two important things in my work. Yeah. Worthy of the friendship lying underneath the stone He was a proper master let the sheep be his own The houses in great land Many golden store He would have spent the whole lot On it again, I'm sure The blackbirds are singing At the breaking of the day Poor old Henry Clark He left and went away Twenty years he scarcely slept upon a proper bed Sleeping with that faint heart inside a weary head And in the weeks he gazed out over Plymouth Bay To see about those green girls who was back one day The blackbirds are singing the breaking of the day The poor old Henry Clark He left and went away And now his days are over For he was taken ill And carried to the workhouse Against his will But being just a mortal He lived a life quite tired He only lived for one month And then his world expired The blackbirds are singing At the breaking of the day About Henry Clark I think the greatest accomplishment so far would be the Mercury Music Prize. That must be the point where it launched me into that. Um, you know, that level of, of having a, uh, you know, a steady career. Um, and at that point, launched me into the mainstream. You know, I was, I was suddenly thrust in there with, yeah, with a label, with everything really. It was, it was a busy time for me. Um, but the other, I think the other one is having the, I had a text from Robert Plant, you know, and that's pretty random, out of the blue. And then, you know, last year, the same from Van Morrison. So it's very strange when you get these calls from these big, big stars. It's pretty amazing. I think about it sometimes when I'm in a, I was in a record shop earlier on, going through albums and, you know, you pick out a Van Morrison, you think, yeah, actually, this is this is a big deal, you know. That's when you you switch from the musician to the uh, the listener, and you think, wow, what opportunities when you've been able to work with these people. So, 
I think any of those, those points, yeah. So my own career, but also I've sort of forged and, you know, carved this career as a, a gun for hire, you know, a melody maker, ideas man, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice having the two, wearing the two hats, I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs>